been joined by Councilmember Marquise Harris Dawson, uh, Councilmember Mitch Englander, and Councilmember Felipe Fuentes. Uh, we'll get this meeting started. And um, first, if we could go to the consent items. Items number two, we could uh, put that on consent, please, if there are no objections. Uh, item number three, we will continue to uh, January 12th. And uh, the other items will be action items, so we will call item number 10 to order. Sure. Item 10, Councilman, is uh, Mr. Legrand's weekly report. Welcome, Mr. Legrand. Good morning, Council Members. A brief update for you on some of the things going on in the Planning Department. On December 8th, the Department of Management met with um, industry leaders from the Building Industry Association regarding our small lot ordinance and some upcoming um, updates that we're working on. Some of the updates address compatibility with neighborhood character as well as setbacks um, that would more mimic the zones that these projects um, are developed in rather than reductions that are currently allowed. Um, as well as simple things like where to keep trash enclosures to make these projects um, fit better into the existing fabric of Los Angeles. So we'll be working on those and the um, release date will be sometime into the new year and we'll be bringing those forward to the Planning Commission and the City Council as, long, as well as with some um, more design considerations and design guidelines. On December 9th, the management team of the Planning Department hosted a quarterly update with the City Planning Council deputies. Um, there was great attendance and we went over many items like the mobility plan, housing policy initiatives, updates on Recode LA, as well as the work we've been doing on ba baseline mansionization ordinance and the community plan update program. Um, we had a department holiday party at December 10th. Um, over 160 employees participated with their families. It was very nice to see anybody, as, see everybody, as well as some retirees from the department, Con Howe, as well as Bob Genovese and Terry Speth were in attendance. So it was great to see them come back and support the department. A few other items, um, the Planning Commission on December 10th, last Thursday, um, recommended approval to this body of the Palladium Mixed Use Project. And that was continued from an earlier meeting on December 19th that was unanimously approved, as well as um, the LA's um, football club, a new 22,000 seat professional soccer stadium and associated amenities on a 15 acre site in Exposition Park. That was also approved and we'll be moving forward to um, the Plum Committee in the following months. Um, that concludes my report and I'll be available for any questions. Thank you. Any questions or comments for our director? I know we have one public speaker, Wayne B. Yes, the city's mobility plan, a disgrace, an absolute disgrace. It's got to go down in flames. Closing off lanes of public travel is not good planning. It's a destructive way to plan. And that's why Cedillo doesn't want to listen to it, because he knows in CD1 you're not going to be able to move down any of them little streets anymore. You're going to be driving your car, and you're going to be waiting four hours to turn right, because all the bus lanes and all the, the bicycle lanes are going to take up all the travel. But the EI, the Environmental Impact Report, has got to show a substantial increase in smog and congestion with such a ridiculous plan to shut off lanes of traffic. If you did an honest EIR, that mobility plan wouldn't pass the sniff test if it was in China, okay? So it's got to be stopped, get rid of the mobility plan, and vote no on Mitchell Englander for supervisor. Next item is item number one. Item number one, please. Um, C Councilman, there's a comment that there's a card for item 10. Uh, the card is not in the queue when the item has started, so okay. we will not take on that card. Next uh, okay. item number one, please. Item one, Councilman, is a communication for the mayor relative to the appointment of Ms. Aura Garcia to the North Planning Area Planning Commission. She's a resident of CD7. Thank you very much. Uh, we could call um, 
Let's Garcia up to the podium, please, and welcome. I want to thank you for your willingness to serve on this planning commission, and uh, please, uh, if there's anything you'd like to share with the committee. Thank you so much. First and foremost, thank you to everybody here. Every, thank you for everybody that's here and all the community that's back. I appreciate and I'm very humbled to be part, to be appointed a commissioner for the city of LA. I intend to fulfill my responsibility to the best of my ability. And I'm here to serve the city. I'm a native of the city. I was born and raised in the city of LA. I made the Valley my home 15 years ago after I graduated from CSUN. And I uh, very proudly say that I also uh, just recently am a graduate of USC. And I say that because I have ties all over the city. So not only in South LA, but also in the Valley and East area is where I grew up as well. So I'm completely a native of LA. I love LA and I will continue to serve to the best that I can. Thank you. Thank you, and uh, how is CD7 these days? I love where I live. Mr. Councilman uh, Felipe Fuentes is doing a great job. I live in Silmar, and I would not move from Silmar. <laughs> so thank you, Council Member. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Thank you, and uh, we uh, appreciate your time and effort. I know it's uh, uh, a volunteer position, so uh, we appreciate you willing to put in the effort. Um, I believe that these area planning commissions uh, are very important for us to move forward and make some very important decisions. And so um, I actually served on the East Area Planning Commission when they were first started. And uh, we uh, often found it most valuable when people were informed and prepared for those meetings to make the right decisions. And so uh, we look forward to uh, your input on this commission. Got Thank it. You. Thank you. I agree. Okay. Any other Thank you. That's been moved and seconded with no objections. So ordered. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Next item. Next item, Councilman, is an appeal by Boylston LLC. This is a halt route uh, appeal as to the hours of uh, operation. I'm sorry. On, I'm sorry. On item number one, we did have two cards on public speakers. So let's uh, take those up now. We're just put in. Antonia Ramirez and then Wayne. And I'd like to remind the public speakers to please speak on the item on the agenda Speaking for which you on have. Mrs. Uh, ma'am, Ms. Ramirez, I'm not finished. Oh. Please speak to the item on the agenda for which you are coming up to speak on that one particular item. Thank you. And thank you. We are all literate here. Um, Speaking of Ms. Aura Garcia, I hope that she does uphold high standards, that she as a Latina can be objective, fair, and neutral. But by looking at her, I'm sorry, I disagree with the appointment. She's not qualified. I don't think she can be objective, fair, or neutral. Um, she's already got her homies packed up on one side. So again, she's probably going to give preferential treatment to all the chango, wetbacks, and gangbangers. So I do not agree with her appointment. And you will see, I'm right. Wayne. After Wayne is Hess Herman. No, no, no puede pasear este. Por qué? Porque en en distrito siete es solo una latina. Porque en esta comisión no hay judíos, no hay chinos. Porque solo latinos. Nortinos en no, no, latinos en norteño valle es una es una cultura muy diversidad hay muchos blancos hay muchos chinos pero si usted solo pone a apuntar uno uno latinos en en los áreas de judíos solo apuntar julios hay una ciudad de racismo Por qué no blancos? Hey, los blancos no tienen los dueños, no solo inquilos. So, ahora García no está aquí para oído el público. So, somos latinos. No me gusta ahora García. That's Herman. Wow, Miss Agua Garcia, 
for the North Valley Area Planning Commission. Now, in question is whether or not <clears throat> she is regarded as a person of interest for that area. Because the bottom line is, I don't believe the public read her resume to determine whether or not she is uh, qualified. Uh, the, the chair sp said earlier that he had interest in, in the same particular area. But as I know the chair very well, there was uh, problems in Boyle Heights where the chair uh, uses authority to not make planning commission an area protected for public trust and public interest. So next time the chair decides to appoint someone, he should have a resume in the back of the room so that every individual that's sitting here tonight is able to know for a fact what your qualifications are. Okay, well, um, item uh, has been moved and seconded. We'll approve that item and go to item number four, please. Yes, Councilman, item four is an appeal by Boylston LLC. This is a haul route appeal relative to the hours um, of hauling. Okay, staff here on this item. Good afternoon, Cora Johnson, Board Secretary for the Board of Building and Safety Commission. A uh, haul route was held on November 17th, 2015 to haul uh, approximately 27,420 cubic yards of earth from the project site. Uh, the haul route was approved with the hauling hours of Monday through Friday, 9 to 2, and Saturday from 9 to 4. And those hours were approved by the Department of Transportation and Street Services. Do you have any questions? Nope. Okay. Um, Councilmember Cedillo, this is in CD1. Would you like to hear public comment first, or do you want to speak on it? Okay, Wayne from Encino. Mr. Wayne is Jeff Lee. CD1. So now we get to the CD1, the dirt. So now you've got to go and dig up all this dirt. 27,420 cubic yards of earth located at every single address on North Boylston Street. The whole block has to be dug up, dug up dug up and then you have to put it in trucks and then you got to ship it to people that are not white because you put this dirt in the middle of Beverly Hills they don't tolerate this so you stick the dirt into the trucks and put them down all the streets a little tiny streets in CD1 Boylston Chinatown breaking the streets with those big heavy trucks and then the potholes are left, the dirt is left, and the people are left in despair. Vote no. Jeff Lee and Herman. Uh, Jeff Lee for Lion Boylston. I'm just here to answer any questions the committee may have. Okay. Herman. Talking about yards of earth from a property located at these particular addresses in North Boylston. But this is not the fault of Mr. Gilbert Cedillo. This is the fault of public works not doing their job to satisfy the culture of what the city has disgracefully violated our rights under the American Disability Act to remove this additional cubic yards. I really thought that there would be some type of physical impact statement, but as you read, none was submitted. Nevertheless, you find out that the negative declaration was related to the EIR. None submitted, other than the Quality Act finding, which found really basically that building and safety and its commissioner's report was inadequate. Inadequate.
Thank you. Mr. Studio? Okay, so the amending language is section C1. The hauling operations are restricted to hours between 9 a.m. and 2 p.m. on Mondays through Fridays and between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. on Saturdays. Unless additional hours are agreed to in writing between the applicant and the principal at Edward R. Roybal Learning Center, provided, however, that any such hours may not exceed those otherwise allowed by the Los Angeles Municipal Code, the applicant shall submit evidence of such an agreement to the Los Angeles Department of Building and Safety prior to the issuance of grading permit. No hauling is allowed on Sundays or city holidays. Haul vehicles may not arrive at the site before the designated time. It's fine. I just have a question for the city attorney. The language about unless additional hours are agreed to in writing between the applicant and the principal of Edward R. Roybal, is that definitive enough for us to pass that and uh, be understood? Terry Kaufman, Mesilla City Attorney's Office. I probably would have said in, in consultation with, but if you're not going to use that language, then okay. I don't have a problem uh, with this. Well, I'll leave it up to CD1, but it's kind of ambiguous, sir. Um, uh, just to leave, I mean, language to say, unless um, additional hours are agreed to, it kind of leaves it open, but we'll, just something to highlight. We'll pass as you wish. Thank you. Moved by Ms. Cedillo. Any objections or any other questions? No objections. So the action, Councilman, will be to grant in part, deny in part. The action is to... Uh, with the modified condition. Yeah, to grant in part, deny in part, uh, with revised conditions as, pre as presented by CD1. Thank you. Any objections? Seeing none, so ordered. Next item. Um, the next item is item five, Councilman. It's an appeal by Ben Resnick, as well as other, um, I believe it's three other appellants. It's relative to the Sportsman's Lodge site in CD2, and this is a CEQA appeal. Staff here on this item, please. Uh, Council members, Jennifer Driver from Planning Staff. Um, what you have before you is an appeal of the environmental um, of a director's approval of a project permit compliance and adjustment of an approximately a thousand square foot or one hundred thousand square foot mixed use shopping center in the Ventura Boulevard specific plan. Um, just the background: it was appealed. The director's determination was appealed by nine people or nine groups, and the South Valley Area Planning Commission denied the appeals and sustains the area the director's determination um, of the approval of the project as well as the. Uh, environmental report that's related to it. So what you have before you today is just the appeal of the environmental um, that was filed after the Area Planning Commission's decision and planning staff still recommends sustaining the Area Planning Commission's decision to approve the and adopt the environmental mitigation. Um, I'm going to defer to other people's comments so you can hear more of the, the details of the issues with the environmental but we do recommend continuing adoption of the environmental. Do you recommend, I'm sorry I missed the last piece. We recommend continuing the adoption of the environmental that was granted by the Area Planning Commission. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Any questions now for staff? No? Okay, we will um, now hear from the appellants. I'm trying to determine here, um, we have four appellants. Um, Berlin. Quat, Cher, and uh, we have Benjamin Resnick and Neil Brower for Ventura Boulevard Associates. So each of the appellants have five minutes each, and um, and Mr. Uh, Resnick uh, uh, the, and Mr. Brower, uh, you could split those five minutes between the two. Cards. I think Mr. Brower may have just put in a uh, as, as comment on the case, so uh, could have one minute. Then yeah, he can have he one can minute. have one minute. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so we'll start with Patrice Berlin.
Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Patrice Berlin. I am one of the four appellants. I've owned one of the homes directly across the river from the Sportsman's Lodge for 19 years. I'm one of the many neighbors that attended a neighborhood council meeting prompted by a very vague notice in April of 2014, where we thought the meeting was about the gym previously planned in 2009. None of us had ever heard anything about the project and were stunned that evening when we found out it had been approved by city planning, neighborhood council, Councilman Krikorian, Homeowners Association, etc. The homeowners were never notified and never asked for input until we voiced our objections. Since April of 2014, the opposition to this project has grown in the hundreds of stakeholders after they've been made aware of it. I've been personally attacked and harassed by Mr. Weintraub. He and his lawyers have improperly subpoenaed documents, including my emails and other documents relating to my fight against this project. Opponents of the project, including me, will not be intimidated by Mr. Weintraub's harassment and attempts to retaliate for our expressing our First Amendment rights to oppose this project. His harassment is a threat to the rights of all city residents to participate in the land use process and voice objections and concerns without fear of retribution. None of us have anything to do with any legal fight Mr. Weintraub has with the hotel. There are hundreds of stakeholders that are opposed to the underhanded way this project has been handled. We all object to the shortage and shared plan parking as well as the potential traffic as well, and as well as the sale of the fire station at a discounted rate to Mr. Weintraub and writing off bed taxes that he didn't pay. We implore, we implore you to take a step back, listen to the stakeholders, and take an independent look at this ill-conceived project as proposed. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Stephen Quatt. My name is Stephen Quatt. I live in Studio City. I've been a resident for 31 years, approximately four blocks down and on the other side of Coldwater. Um, I was previously a member of the Studio City Neighborhood Council that this came in front of, and one of the reasons why I resigned was the improprieties that took place during the whole process. Uh, I've provided you several emails that were sent, one of them by the Vice President Chair of the Land Use Committee six years before the thing ever came in front of us where she was in front of the project to the applicant. There are a couple of the emails there. At the appeal hearing in Van Nuys, the uh, South Valley Planning Commissioner said he based his decision mostly on the fact of the unanimous support of the project by the Studio City Neighborhood Council and the Studio City Residents Association. I know for a fact I voted against that. Uh, I don't know how it got changed. The parking shortage, according to the Ventura Cahuanga specific plan, is equal to all, it's actually greater than all the available parking spaces from Whitsitt to Fulton, both sides combined, which is 236. The parking plan is nothing but smoke and mirrors. The plan should not be approved. The parking study, according to the plan, should have had been 24 hours a day for seven consecutive days. It was, done, it was not done. They just pulled numbers out of the sky vote against this project. And I give the balance of my time to Ben Resnick. Uh, um, President Wiesar, uh, just to orient the committee, this is an appeal under Public Resources Code 21151C, so it's a CEQA appeal. It's not the um, appeal uh, from the underlying um, entitlements. Sometimes it's a little difficult when people are talking about the project to hear when they're getting to something that might relate to the CEQA, but that's what, the, it's the CEQA that's in front of you yeah. today. So what's before us today is the, um, the appeal focuses on solely on the adequacy of the environmental clearance or the Correct. mitigated negative deck, right? Correct. Okay. Thank you. Andrea Scher. Hi, my name is Andrea Scher. My family and I have lived in Studio City for the past 30 years. When we moved here, it was a sleepy little village, but today we feel like we are being bombarded by so many different construction developments all at once in a tiny geographic area. I just want to show you. This is a map of Studio City. 
Radio City and the constructions that are happening are all in that tiny little area, one, two, and three. And this is the whole of Studio City, besides the water main that's broken. Um, I'm trying to cut down on my notes. So I've been fighting uh, against the uh, Whitsett, uh, Weddington Golf and Tennis, the Harvard Westlake School, and now we find the Sportsman's Landing, which is 262, from what I understand, too few parking spaces for the size and nature of the property. There's been zero transparency and zero attempt to bring us, the residents and stakeholders, into the fold. We have not had a single meeting with the Residents Association and the Neighbourhood Council. We were told about it when the meeting was there and it was almost a, a fair accompli. Um, just going back to the Sportsman's Lodge, we that, cannot um, get out. I'm sorry, hold on one second. Was that five minutes? Yeah, each, yes. Okay, you have, um, sorry about that, on each appellant, you have five minutes each, so you have about four minutes left. Okay, well, I'm not going to read you all that I've written. I have submitted one. I didn't know I had to submit six. Um, but just to get back to the Sportsman's Landing, um, and just I live across the road from the Sportsman's um, Lodge on, and Landing, um, on the other side of Ventura Boulevard, we cannot get out of our neighborhood. From Halkirk, from Alcove, from Goodland Avenue, we are blocked in with cars coming along Ventura Boulevard and Coldwater Canyon, and in the mornings and during the day, by the time the one traffic light has changed, we just cannot get across the road. We cannot turn up to get onto Coldwater Canyon. Sorry, I'm shaking, I'm so nervous. So um, we are being blocked out, and this is all before the, any of this construction is uh, taking place. There's been, the, for the last six years, when the water main broke on Coldwater Canyon, we're, un, we're having DWP working in our streets. So th the neighborhood is a mess. Um, and even now, without the construction, the addition of the new parking spaces, we cannot get out of our, our, out of our tiny little area. Uh, we don't need any more shops and restaurants. There are a number of vacant streets, I mean vacant um, shops and restaurants on Ventura Boulevard and in our area. We can't handle any more traffic. So um, our studio city is just becoming totally gridlocked and I thank you for your time and hope you will take all of this into consideration. I cede my time to whoever needs it. Thank on you. Our side. Thank you. Benjamin Resnick. Good afternoon and happy holidays to the co committee. Uh, my name is Ben Resnick with Jeffrey Mangles, Butler, and Mitchell. Uh, I'm here for a different reason. Um, I represent the owners of the Sportsman's Lodge, the property that is. Uh, that property is leased to the applicant before you, Mr. Weintraub and his entity. He also owns the property next door, which is the banquet facility. Many of you have probably visited there over the years. The banquet facility, fish pond, and all that. His plan is to demolish all that and build a new center with restaurants, retail, and a gymnasium, fitness center. So far, so good. Problem my client has, and why I'm here and why we've objected, is that the proposed new project is substantially underparked, which means that all the overflow parking is going to go into the Motor Lodge Hotel affecting our client's property. It's going to go on the street, but we have a great concern because of this underparked area. How did they get here then? So in the city of LA, you have a couple of ways to deal with parking. You either provide the code parking for the various uses. In this case, it's a fitness center, restaurants, and retail. The numbers, based on their own study, is they need 702 parking spaces. They don't have that. So another way is you can come in and ask for a variance. You can say to the city, I need to get a reduced parking. You ask for a variance, and you go through a variance process. They didn't do that. There's a middle ground in the city called shared parking. Shared parking, provided in the code, is the procedure by which you come in and you say, my multiple different uses don't compete for parking at the same time. 
And so if I have a movie theater and I have an office building, I can use those spaces in the morning for the office building and the evening for the theaters. So we have a provision where you can apply to a zoning administrator who can show that the peak hour demands do not compete. So they did that so-called study, but their study shows that their peak hour for those three uses are all at 6 p.m. They're all at the same time. The equinox that they want to put in, the restaurants, that's the peak. So how do you get around not providing 702 spaces? So what they did is they said, you know, the city's number of how many parking spaces you need for the equinox is wrong. They went out and they did their own survey and they came back and they said, we don't need that many parking spaces. We need less. And they used a different number, 30% less. And that's how they say that they can provide 440 parking spaces and that will be enough. Now maybe their studies are correct and maybe they, that's what the case is. But the procedure then is not a shared parking agreement. That's an abuse of that process. You have to ask for a variance or an exception from the specific plan. What's being violated here is not only the city parking code, but the Ventura Boulevard specific plan, which requires that number of parking spaces be provided. So we have a serious issue. And why this is an appeal of the mitigated neck deck is because the environmental review said there'd be no impacts. Well, of course there are no impacts if you don't do the right study or if you simply bamboozle everyone and say, I've done a shared study arrangement and I can do this, when in fact you just made up your own numbers. They, they admit it. They took it from ULI, what their statistics show. They decided to dis look at their own surveys of other gymnasiums. So if they want to do this, there is a process. And that means the findings are going to be different. They'll have to go to the community. They'll have to show why they should be getting exceptions from the specific plan. They didn't have to do that here. And that's what's wrong with this case. So um, not only that, but the parking spaces they say they're going to provide, the 440, more than 50% of them are in tandem. So what they say they're going to have a valet service. You can now see why my client is very concerned with people who are going to go to the gymnasium. Are they really all going to use valets? Are everyone really going to be uh, uh, spending that? Even though the valet is free, you know the, the resistance. But we are right there at the motor lodge, which, while it is operated by the applicant, our client owns that property. And we have a serious concern that it will negatively impact that as well. So what they need to do here and that's why the environmental is inadequate. What this needs to be done is the proper study needs to be done, and then it could be approved if they want to approve it, if the city decides to make the findings that it could uh, uh, provide something of a variance. And I, this is not my argument. This is right out of their own shared parking study, where they admit they said they took numbers that are not in the code and that they don't believe the code is right. They say that in their shared parking. I don't understand how we're here today. If they say they don't believe the code is right, then file for an exception or a variance. So that's why we're asking this committee and the city council not to adopt the mitigated neck deck, but to set aside, send it back for that. Thank you. Neil Brower, uh, one minute. And all other public speakers now have one minute. Good afternoon, Neil Brower, Jeff from Engels, Butler and Mitchell, uh, also representing Ventura Boulevard Associates. Uh, among our, most of our substantive uh, objections at the MND are covered in our correspondence to you. I just wanted to just briefly hit home the main points. The first is that CEQA and case law both require that an MND may not be prepared and that an EIR must be prepared when a fair argument exists that a significant impact may occur or where there's a disagreement among experts as to the significance of an impact. And here, both are satisfied, at least with respect to the air quality analysis, the noise analysis, the traffic and parking, and greenhouse gases. In many of those cases, there's no empirical data to support the analysis. In at least one of those cases, greenhouse gases, not only is there no threshold, but the substantive discussion is cut and pasted from the visual quality section of the MND. Each of these analyses also are subject to significant debate about the assumptions behind them, the baseline value of the data, whether mitigation measures are effective, or whether they can even be enforced. For all of these reasons, an EIR must be prepared in this case. Thank you. Thank you. Alicia Bartley, and then Aaron Green.
Councilman, with your where I'm going to go first. We're representing the applicant. My name is Aaron Green. Before we start, I'm hoping that we might be able to get. Before we start, I'm hoping that we might be able to get eight minutes, considering there are a number of appeals pending, and we'd like to address them all at once, as opposed to individually. No, uh, we asked earlier on if uh, which representative of uh, the applicant would receive the five minutes. Uh, we were told it was Mr. Resnick. So, any other representatives have one minute. Mr. Resnick doesn't represent the applicant. Oh, oh, that's right. I'm sorry. You're correct. I mixed that up. You're correct. I got this, the stickies mixed up up here. So, yes, the applicant has uh, five minutes. Um, one of you has five minutes, and whoever you want has uh, one minute. Yes, I apologize for that. Okay. Yeah. So, my name is Aaron Green. I'm with the AFRIA Consulting Group. We represent the applicant for this project, the Sportsman's Landing. Um, I want to quickly note that long before this project started, my client has been involved in the community since he bought this property in 2007. Um, we have the support, as you'll hear today, from the Studio City Neighborhood Council, the Studio City Residents Association, the Improvement Association, and the Chamber, which, as we understand, has never happened before for a project like this. I realize that many of these pieces are not directly cogent to the MND, but they've been raised as part of the context for this project. Um, we have worked directly on this project with uh, neighborhood groups and with our, our general neighbors for many years. We've had at least six meetings on this project with the various organizations that have been involved. Um, I am surprised to hear that some people feel like there are a number of opponents. We have only identified a handful of people with concerns. Um, and we've canvassed the community. Um, we've worked very closely with our neighbors and undertook uh, an input project uh, information to this project. In fact, the name of the project changed based on this, uh, the suggestion of the neighborhood council in a hearing that we had there. Um, I will let Alicia Bartley, who's with Gaines and Stacy, talk about many of the MND related issues, but I would like to note, um, you heard a, a very eloquent story from Mr. Resnick about the insufficiently, insufficiency of this MND, but the tale that he told you was not accurate. His real in incentive on this is that his clients who live in New York are interested in getting a bigger piece of the rent check than they negotiated on the lease. And so they want more money and they'd like a piece of the project. And that's the only reason that he has been retained to work on this and that there has been this significant and well-funded opposition to the project. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. Good afternoon, Chair Weezar and members of the co committee. This is Alicia Bartley of uh, Gaines and Stacy. We're the Land Use Council for the applicant, which is Sportsman's Lodge, REW LLC. Uh, again, what is at issue before you today is whether the city's environmental analysis of the Sportsman's Landing project complies with the requirements of CEQA. This project, which has been painted by the, the appellants, I'm sorry, the appellants as a large mega mall, is actually a shopping center that is quite conservative in size. Size. The proposal is to develop the site with less than 40% of what is allowed under the already restrictive specific plan. Leading the charge in today's appeals is the owner of the adjacent Sportsman's Lodge Hotel parcel. This is the underlying land owner, not the operator of the hotel. It is important for this committee to understand that the project applicant, the project applicant's principal, Richard Weintraub, is also a principal of the entity that is the long-term lessee of the hotel property. As such, Mr. Weintraub controls the operation of both sites. Today's appeal is simply a pawn in the hotel landowner's shakedown of our client. By contesting the project approvals at every turn, this wealthy New York developer hopes to force our client to give a, a piece of the project. Turning it back to the only issue before you today, CEQA requires that an MND must be upheld unless a substantial evidence in light of the whole record supports a fair argument that a project may have a significant effect on the environment. Today you have heard some arguments suggesting that the project may cause certain environmental impacts. However, the appellant's arguments are sorely lacking in any evidence of such impacts. For example, the purported expert report submitted by the appellant prepared on the subjects of traffic and parking and on noise raise alleged de deficiencies regarding the applicant's expert reports on those topics. However, the supposed deficiencies are based on misinformation and untruths as described in detail in the memorandum prepared by Rincon Consultants, Inc., which has been submitted to, to the record and is before you today. Appellant's expert reports failed to raise a fair argument that the project may have a significant effect on the environment and are properly disregarded under well-established CEQA case law. Each of the points that the appellants have raised today have been responded to in detail in the Rincon report. 
As such, I will not burden this committee with a recitation of those technical responses. Um, in conclusion, the app appellants have submitted no evidence supporting a fair argument that the project may have a significant effect on the environment. The RINCON report responds to each of the issues raised by the appellants in detail, and we respectfully request that this committee vote to deny the pending appeals and uphold the city's adoption of the MND. Thank you. Thank you. Jane Cooner Rousseau, Doug Mensman, and Jeanette Weinberg. Thank you. I don't think any of this is very interesting unless you have a stake in it. And I do because I live on Valley Heart Drive north. There are two Valley Heart Drives, one on either side of the river wash. Both of those streets only have parking on one side. As it is now, the people that work in the Sportsman's Lodge restaurant and the hotel, they park on our street because there's not enough parking where they are already. So we have a parking problem right now. But there's a bigger problem, and that's gridlock. I can't get out of my street or into my street from Coldwater Canyon between 6 and 9.30 a.m. in the morning and in the evening. The reason is because people are going over Coldwater Canyon in both directions to and from work. So, in light of the codes and the zones and the this and the that, it means nothing to me. What I only know about is gridlock. And if it's gridlock now, how is this street going to accommodate additional traffic into this proposed facility? Thank you. Furthermore, there's a gym at the end of the corner. Your we already time have is up. a gym. Well, yeah, I'm trying to be fair to everybody and be okay. consistent that everybody has the Thank same amount much. of time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Doug Mensman, Jeanette Weinberg. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Yes. Jeanette Weinberg, Larry O'Rourke, Lisa Sarkin. My name is Jeanette Weinberg, and I live across the street, you might say, from the Sportsman's Lodge. I've lived there for 46 years, and that Sportsman's Lodge is such a beautiful facility. It really has been a joy. But now, the changes they're proposing will be a disaster, because primarily the parking, and as Jane said, the traffic is, is unbearable why they want to put in 20 uh, shops and six restaurants and a large Equinox uh, gym. It, it will be impossible to live there anymore. It's really creating a problem with the price and value of our properties because there's no place to park and everybody's parking on our street, which as Jane said, only is on one side of the street because the river runs on the other. So therefore, I, I just plead with you to think about. Thank you. Larry O'Rourke, Lisa Sarkin. Good afternoon. My name's Larry O'Rourke. Uh, I'm an area resident. I've, uh, I live just to the north and to the west of the Sportsman's Lodge. I've lived there now for about 18 years. Um, I looked at the entire project with great enthusiasm when I heard about it. Um, I realized that the entire area is gentrifying right now. Along Ventura Boulevard and in the neighborhoods immediately to the north and the west. There's homes that are being rebuilt. We've never seen a boom like this in Sherman Oaks and Studio City. Uh, it's, it's wonderful for everybody. It brings commerce into the area. It, it enlivens the area. It, it just... It's taking an area that, that's been for years just sort of, uh, in a way, downtrodden, and it's just bringing new life there. I understand there are parking issues, but I'm sure that the uh, individuals behind this development will go through and make sure that there is parking, and this is not going to become the, uh, the horrible gridlock that everybody thinks. Thank you. Thank you. Lisa Sarkin, Ben De Benedetto. Good afternoon, Lisa Sarkin, Studio City Neighborhood Council. I'm the Vice President and the Chair of the Land Use Committee. You have our motion before you and the agreed upon conditions that we requested that 
the Wine Tribe group do. Everything that was required by the Neighborhood Council and more was done by our Neighborhood Council as we always do on every issue, every issue that we have. We even required the Wine Tribe group to send by mail to everyone in the 500 foot radius the agenda for the land use committee. We had a second land use committee because we weren't satisfied with some of the information we were told. I set up an advisory committee with the nine people that were actually at the meeting after all of that was sent out to all of the neighbors. Nine people came. You were told that, that the, we stated that there was a unanimous decision on the record for this, uh, for this motion, which there was not. I don't believe anybody ever said there was. If there was a mistake, it should have been taken care of in September, the month after we had this Thank taken you. care of. That we had this before us. And that ben, happened. Victoria Shulman. Shulman. Good afternoon. Ben DiBenedetto. I'm uh, the Vice President of the Studio City Neighborhood Council. I'm here to uh, lend my support to the project. The Sportsman's Lodge has a long and wonderful history with our community in Studio City. However, in many of the past several years, it is not the jewel that it used to be. And uh, this project is quite prudent. And the footprint of this project, I think, is uh, about as good as we could expect from anybody that would come in and revitalize this uh, important landmark for Studio City. Uh, it's important for the Business Improvement District. It's also important for the residents and the stakeholders of uh, Studio City to have this wonderful facility and, and additional amenities uh, in a situation where we can use them. Additionally, the city is spending a lot of money for a, uh, a bike trail directly behind the Sportsman's Lodge, or what becomes Sportsman's Landing, and uh, they will make every effort to tie into that so that those that use that trail will... Thank you. Thank you. Victoria Shulam, Daniel Condit, Danielle. Shalom. I have lived in the neighborhood directly behind Sportsman's Lodge. I've lived I'm Victoria Shalom. I've lived in the neighborhood directly behind the Sportsman's Lodge for 36 years. Up until recently it's been idyllic. We could use more cops, by the way. We were never surveyed. I live just north of Woodbridge. We were never surveyed. We were never asked about this. This project is horrendous to me on several levels. The lack of parking is spectacular, and that report does not pass the smell test. The employees weren't even considered in the parking. The traffic on Coldwater is horrendous. We cannot get out of Coldwater Canyon to the west, onto Coldwater to the west in the evening because of the traffic. We have to drive all the way to the other side of the project and all the way around. I, I'm very dismayed at how this was all handled and how we've been treated. Is that my time? It's Thank time. you very much for your time. Thank you, Danielle Condit, Eric Previn. Hi, my name is Danielle Condit and I am the Marketing and Services Coordinator of the Studio City Business District. Uh, the district is home to over 300 restaurants and retailers, which attracts a heavy pedestrian presence made up of residents, visitor, visitors, and employees. The pedestrian-rich atmosphere craves the accessibility to trendy shops and five-star Yelp reviewed eateries. And because of this, it is only more of an incentive to support the continued development of the Ventura Boulevard corridor. The Sports and Landing project would greatly enhance the area and improve the overall economic vitality of the business community and draw in more customers, increase commerce, and attract future business. The current structure no longer adds to the overall atmosphere of the area, and by moving forward with the project, the development will aesthetically enhance the community and promote a pedestrian-friendly environment that welcomes people to explore the area. In early 2016, the district will be launching a shuttle program that will operate along Ventura Boulevard between Coldwater and um, Radford Avenue. The sports and standing development would be an invaluable asset to this pilot program. Uh, in conclusion, this project will restore the property to its true potential and complement the overall business and residential community. Thank you. Thank you. Eric Previn, Alan Diamond. Yes, it's Eric Previn from CD2. And I am 
proposed to this project, and I specifically feel that the Ventura Boulevard specific plan has not been heeded to regarding the transportation issues that you heard about by various uh, people today. And that is a big issue in Studio City. I've lived there for 30 years. We have seen a dramatic increase in congestion and difficulty. This project was not properly vetted by the community. I was running for office, guys. You knew that. And I was looking, there was nothing about it. I've discovered it because of the 4230 Coldwater Canyon Firehouse that was allegedly a public need and necessity to be handed over to Weintraub at a preferential pricing. And then I dug a little deeper because I was upset about that and found out that in 2013, the city of Los Angeles had to sue the guy to get transit occupancy taxes and parking occupancy taxes back from the guy. And he didn't pay the whole 1.6 that he allegedly owed. He paid 1.1. That's a $500,000 discount. Now, look. Everybody wants a discount on their tax bill, including me, but that is not appropriate. And something is in this city right now that is a little defective, and it has to do with pleasing the needs of special interests over the local community residents. And guys, Thank you. this needs an EIR. You heard it from both Thank sides. You. Thank, Thank you. you. If you could wrap it up. Thank you. Alan Diamond, Herman. Good afternoon. My name is Alan Diamond, and I'm the president of the Studio City Residents Association. By way of background, the SCRA Land Use Committee and its board worked with the applicant over the years on impacts of concerns to the SCRA members. We are approximately 2,000 members, and we represent these members. Today, I'm not going to address the MMD, the CEQA findings, and other elements of this appeal, but I'm going to speak to the report of the Director of Planning dated April the 23rd, 2015, they were subject to modified conditions uh, of approval. As such, it was sustained by the South Valley Area Planning Commission. Of importance to the SCRA was that the Director retained jurisdiction for future review should the question of inadequate parking apply and arise. The this future review by the planner, Planning Department on this point was welcomed by our members. Therefore, the SCRA concurred with the Drake's report and agrees with the action taken Thank by you. the South Valley Area Planning Commission. Thank you. Thank you. Herman, Wayne. There you go, folks. You heard it. 15060D34, these code ethic violations that impose negative environmental impacts that impact the control plan of the use of this land. Due to Krikorian, <laughs> son of a bitch, who doesn't allow due process, and again, <laughs> due process, and as you heard, public said vague notices and a well-known Soon to be one day, County Supervisor Mr. Previn put it very clear. He wants to see you sustain the appeal on this decision so that the public can participate. Mr. County Supervisor Engler, get off your goddamn cell phone and hear what Mr. the public wants. Mr. Herman, wants. Herman, uh, you know the rules. They exist here <laughs> as they do in council. Do not direct council members direct me. If you have something to say, do it broadly. And also, you need to stay on the subject, please. Thank you. So... Mr. Chair, this is all about an issue Thank you very that much. impacts Thank you what very developers much. create. Sir, your time is up. After Sir, your time is up. You interrupted me. I had to finish my point. Uh, Herman, that is your warning. If you disrupt this meeting one more time, you would be asked to leave. Thank you. There it is on the website. Wayne. An attachment filed. 15-0634 gives you the whole story, starting with the firehouse, sold for nothing. Now we complete the process. Campaign donations to Paul <coughs> Krikorian, the GOAT. And now, because you pay to play in the city of Los Angeles, you get what you want. That's all this is about. It's a sham hearing. One fucking minute to talk about something this complicated? Amazing. Absolutely amazing. But you don't care. You know that CD2's mafioso gets what he wants. Wait, and Wayne, you don't want to go into your Wayne, mafia Wayne, territory again, and get what subject, you want. Please. You can't even talk about who represents CD2. Who represents CD2? The kingdom. The king. It's not you. 
It's Paul Krikorian. Vote no on this. Thank you. Jen, Stephen Chavez. Good afternoon, council members. I'm just here to support the appellant in the case of the Sportsman's Lodge. There's been a, lots of discussion as far as the evidence, uh, as, uh, the lack of evidence supplied by the appellants in, case, in the case of the environmental impact. The reality is we're here arguing about parking spaces. Each car produces X amount of carbon and increases greenhouse gas emissions per year. Increasing the parking spaces that's required of the Sportsman's Lodge to do, you, you can't do one without the other. You increase the parking and you're going to increase greenhouse gas emissions, you're going to increase population, you're going to increase neighborhood impact. People are here telling you they can't get out of their homes, Mr. Weezer. Sorry, are you on your phone? Oh, I'm okay. reading People the are file. telling you that I'm you reading the file report on this. Okay, thank you. I thank think you. We, we often have to multitask up here. Thank you very much. I understand. Thank you for clarifying. Uh, the other issues, the, the mayor wants more bike lanes and less... Thank you. Your time is up. Steven Chavez, Roberto Masiriegos. My name is Steven Chavez. I'm a uh, local resident. I live about a mile away in Sherman Oaks. I'm here to lend my support to the project. Um, you know, I, I actually like what the residents are saying about, you know, what they've had growing up in this area in the Sportsman's Lodge. Me as a father of two young kids, an uh, eight-year-old and a five-year-old, I'm looking forward to the Sportsman's Landing building that community, uh, giving us the economic benefit and a place that I can take my kids and show them where they can be proud of a community that I've lived for 10 years and hopefully they'll continue to live long so they can tell stories in future generations about uh, all, the, uh, all, all the benefits and the, uh, the memories that, that we've created at, at this area. So, thank you. Thank you. Roberto Masariegos, Mark Alcala. Uh, good afternoon. Jose Huizar, how are you doing? My name is Roberto Masariegos, um, and I'm here to support this project. Um, we represent workers. I, I'm here with United Here Local 11, and we represent the workers next door to Sportsman Lodge. And I myself work at the Sportsman Lodge Camaro that you guys know the language with um, our union there. And Mr. Richard Wentraub. I will say that he was the first owner that came out and spoke on, on behalf of the minimum wage and raise LA. And I mean, I've been working there for eight years. We do not park on the streets. We have our own parking spots. That's one thing. And I understand the deal that we're having with the, with the parking spots here, but no one is really talking about jobs and what's gonna, what else is gonna create in this city. Um, we have great bus lines down Ventura, so I don't know what we're talking about there. Um, a solid, you know, um, a solid relationship between ownership and union. Uh, I mean, labor peace agreement. We we don't even come across that. So we support this project. Thank you, Mark Alcala, Robert Fisher, or Tisher. Good afternoon, uh, uh, <coughs> councils. Uh, my name is uh, Mark Alcala, and I'm a resident uh, of uh, Resida, city of Resida. I have two daughters, I have my wife, and I'm a representative of United Here Local 11. And uh, also I'm a current employee at this former large hotel too. I'm a member since uh, 1988, and I'm here to support um, uh, the applicant's uh, project. Thank you. Thank you. Robert Fisher or Tisher, Sergio Martis. My name is Robert Fisher. I apologize. My handwriting as a lawyer is not good. Uh, I'm here to support the project. I grew up in Studio City. I'm very familiar with Sportsman's Lodge. In recent years, I've seen that uh, it's gone in disrepair. It's not, it's not what it used to be. It's not uh, a valuable asset on, as it stands on uh, Ventura Boulevard. And I think the Sportsman's Landing is exactly the type of project that it needs to boost up uh, the Valley and Ventura Boulevard, and I'd ask that the council support that project. Thank you. Thank you. Sergio Martis, David Nickerman, Wickerman. Good afternoon. Sergio Martis. Um, I just want to say a couple things really quick. Uh, first off, I definitely support this project. Uh, I'm a Sherman Oaks resident. I drive up and down uh, Ventura Boulevard all the time. 
Uh, I frequent all of the uh, different places to eat, all the shops there, and I think it would help beautify the area. I think the hotel is in the desperate need of, you know, some, you know, some advancements, and I think Richard Weintraub would do an excellent job of that. If you look at all of his past projects, he's done a tremendous job, and I definitely support this project. Thank you very much. Thank you. David and Doug Benzman. David Zuckerman, uh, having grown up in the area, at one point I did enjoy the Sportsman's Lodge, the facilities there. Uh, as a board member of the Financial Planning Association, we've contemplated having some events there. We've come to the conclusion that the place uh, just isn't nice enough these days to have events there. So uh, it's, it's in a state of disrepair, and I do like the plans for the Sportsman's Landing. Uh, here to speak in support of that, think that it would be a tremendous engine for economic growth in the area. Thank you. Thank you. Doug Mansman from CD2. Yes, sir. Mr. Chair, Councilman, thank you. Doug Mansman speaking on behalf of Councilman Paul Kikoyan. Uh You've heard all kinds of things about this project here so far today, and so let's bring it back to the only thing that's in front of you, which is the CEQA adequacy. Um, Councilman and the Council Office agree that the MND is an adequate review of this project. We've taken a look at all of this that it doesn't rise to the level of uh, a full-blown EIR. I think for one of the appellants to come up and state that industry recognized experts in the field analyzed the wrong data set or didn't know which data sets to analyze as part of this was a little bit far reaching in the comments there. So I ask that you affirm South Valley's decision on this one and uh, deny the appeal and, and, uh, and grant the project. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Um, I have a question for staff. Is staff still here? Thank you. An issue was raised um, as to whether the parking was sufficient uh, with respect to the MND. Uh, uh, and uh, one issue that was raised is a proper way to move forward was to either apply for a variance or some other form of exception. Do you have an answer for that? Um, well, the specific plan has various options of how to accommodate parking. One of them is to meet planning code requirements. Um, another one is to do a shared analysis, a shared parking analysis that doesn't actually have to go through the, par uh, the variance process that was alluded to by several of the other speakers around earlier today. Um, I guess municipal code, if you weren't in an inventory book or a specific plan, you would have to go through the variance process. But because this property is an inventory plan, it actually has a different avenue um, that doesn't make you go through that variance process, that we do our own, own internal analysis um, based on, I guess, projected data, which is what was done in this case. So there were no actual studies conducted? There, we used it on a national data, basically, um, which we've done through other projects uh, in the Ventura Boulevard specific plan boundary. I'm sorry, say that again? We, we based the analysis on basically ULI, um, Urban Land Institute data, um, because we couldn't do a 24 hour, seven, seven day a week uh, study because the project is not built. So we based it off of a statist a statistical data that was done by ULI. Is that any different from what we do in other projects? No. No, so we, we do similar things for other projects of this size and magnitude and the type of discretion or approval they're requesting? Correct, yes, we do. Uh, okay, so it's something that's uh, common. Okay, um, and under your opinion, you think the parking is adequate? Based on the studies that were done by national uh, analysis, essentially, yes, I think it is adequate. Uh, okay, my final question is, what's the threshold uh, to do an M&D versus uh, a full EIR? Why did we do an M&D here? Well, as I said, uh, basically based on the studies that were presented by both the applicant and the appellants, um, the M&D analyze both of them and we, we decided that the, there was no significant impact that we could mitigate them through other measures such as the valley parking such as having directional signs between the whole t the landing side and the lodge side sites um, rather um, that the, any potential impact could be contained okay. great thank you thank you very much any other questions or comments no okay. mr. Fuentes uh, you mentioned that there's a distinction between the Ventura plan and the analysis and other plans. Can you uh, 
help me understand sort of the distinction? There's a specific plan, is that what it is? It's the Ventura Coingo Boulevard uh, Corridor specific plan. Um, they have, as I was trying to kind of get that, um, if you weren't on in the specific plan, you would have to go through the zoning administrator's units and have a zone variance or um, yeah, zone variance to deviate and have a share parking proposal approved. But the Ventura Boulevard specific plan doesn't require a variance. It specifically calls out calls that out. So we could do that through just a director's determination, which is what we did. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, on this item, yes, city, city attorney. Ter Terry Kaufman, Messia City Attorney's Office. So um, both the uh, representatives for the applicant and the appellant uh, described for you the fair argument standard, uh, which is um, the standard that you would apply if you are going to have an EIR instead of an MND. Um, I wanted to just read you a, a couple of things. I've done it in the past, but when you're looking at fair argument and whether there's substantial evidence in light of the whole record, substantial evidence includes facts, reasonable assumptions predicated on facts, expert opinions supported by facts. It doesn't include argument, speculation, unsubstantiated opinion or narrative, or clearly inaccurate or erroneous evidence. You, you also, or evidence that's not credible. You, you also heard um, discussion of experts. So when you're looking at experts, um, you don't, uh, for fair argument, you don't weigh the credibility of the, of the experts. What you look at is, um, does the uh, opinion evidence submitted by a qualified expert show significant impacts? That may be conclusive. You look at, um, is the, uh, does the expert lack opinion lack an adequate factual foundation? Um, does the expert opinion, is it not directly relevant to the project's environmental impacts? Then it, then it can be disregarded. You don't have to accept an expert opinion that lacks specificity or fails to adequately explain why the project might cause a significant impact or if it relates to an area outside the expert's field. So if you have those things, you can disregard. If you don't have those things, then you don't weigh the, um, weigh the two okay. in order to find a fair argument. Thank you. Um, and then one other thing on parking. Parking in and of itself is not an impact under CEQA. If the parking related to traffic impacts, then you would look at it that way, but not just parking in and of itself. Okay. Thank you. Any uh, questions or comments? None. Is there a motion? Uh, moved and seconded. Any objections? Seeing none, so ordered. Uh, so, uh, the motion, what's the motion? To deny the appeal, Councilman. Deny the appeal, okay. The, the motion is to deny the appeal. Uh, there's been a second and so ordered. Thank you. Next item. There was a motion to uh, deny the appeal. It was seconded. There was no objections. So the motion to deny the appeal was approved. It is now going to full council. Tomorrow. Tomorrow it will be in full council. Thank you. Next item. <clears throat> the next item, councilman, is item six. It's an appeal by Glenn Block and five other neighbors. It relates to a vesting track map for 16 small lot subdivision uh, project located in CD2. Okay, we uh, believe we heard this item last week. And there were some questions that were raised, and we needed those clarified before we moved on. And the planning department's here. Welcome. All right. Good afternoon. I'm Mark Wershing with the Planning Department of Valley Subdivisions Unit. Uh, yeah, I've just been informed uh, prior to this. One meeting. second. Can individuals who have, uh, can you take your discussions outside, please? It's very difficult to hear in this room. So if anybody needs to have a conversation, if you could please uh, move it outside. Thank you. Yeah, I've just been informed uh, prior to this meeting that the uh, appellate and the applicant have reached a tentative settlement, and when the settlement is finalized, the appellant will want to withdraw their appeal. And I have a copy of their statement uh, for you. And oh, okay. So if we could, um, yes, city attorney. So 
Um, the uh, code 11.5.9.10 uh, deals with um, withdrawals of appeals, and the timing is is important because uh, the withdrawal of an appeal has to be in writing and um, has to be um, 15 days prior to the hearing. Oh. If it's not and they withdraw the appeal, you open up the appeal period again. So if you don't want to do that and they've reached an agreement, um, I don't know if there are conditions that are at issue. You either have to take an action on the appeal or okay. continue it and then deal with it that way. But well, I don't know that you want to reopen the appeal period. Let me ask this. Um, so is the issue that they are, we, we cannot accept the appeal, or is the issue that they would lose rights if they decide to appeal now? So if you were to accept a withdrawal of the appeal within that 15-day window, then it opens up the appeal period because people may have said, oh, someone else appealed, so I didn't have to do that because I thought I'd come to the appeal hearing and say whatever I wanted to say. Yes. So, you know, it's different from if you withdraw an application, that can be done any time before um, a final hearing, including through appeal, and it doesn't require the concurrence of this, okay. of this body. So, um, what, so what is your recommendation uh, to fulfill the intent of the parties? So I guess it depends on what they what they want to do, and you, you may want to take action on the appeal. So. Yes, Mr. Yeah, our, our recommendations okay. would be that you just deny the appeal. Okay. Okay. Well, Mr. Deal? Uh, just procedurally, I was going to suggest maybe that you could amend the appeal with the agreement and make that the uh, appeal. Okay. Uh, well, I don't know what the, you know, I don't know what the, it seems like it's some kind of a private agreement if there are conditions that they want to um, actually impose, those have to be evaluated, so you have to look at that under CEQA, it may okay. be opening uh, we up could more hear than you want to open okay, okay. up. So. We could hear from CD2. You know. Yeah, th again, thank you very much. Uh, Doug Minson speaking for Council Paul Concordia. Um, Council Member, the, the agreement is sort of just that, an ex, you know, out of out of the case agreement here. We don't want to codify necessarily because these aren't technically mitigations that are identified for anything specific. So since we have the agreement between appellants and applicant, um, and ironically, it's funny you should mention that because the withdrawing the appeal on the last day, reopening the appeal period is exactly what happened on the case we just heard. Mm. So if we could deny the appeal, I think the appellants are comfortable with that in that they've got the agreement desired and get the appeal done, get the action through council and get the actual map and M&D taken care of. Okay. Um, before we, uh, uh, there were some questions asked and they were actually questions not only that pertain to this particular case, but they were raised general policy and procedures in the city. One of those questions were whether we were being consistent among specific plans as to how do we apply the small lot division. That was one question. The issue of the Venice uh, uh, specific plan was raised. The other question was raised by Mr. Fuentes as to whether individuals who are living there under the Ellis Act as to whether uh, the uh, movement, the um, relocation fees and everything that they are entitled to is, a, if that uh, is um, followed prior to any ruling the city does or any procedure the city initiates. So do you have answers to those two questions? Yeah, the first question we, we asked the, the applicant to provide us with documentation of the requirements of the Ellis Act as well as the city's rent stabilization ordinance have been adhered to and they did provide documentation. Those are exhibits A, B, and C and, and, and the memo prepared for you. Okay. And the, the, yeah, they provide all, all the documentation. Okay, so and secondly, the larger issue is uh, as we did our research we understand that before a demolition permit is given, if it is under rent stabilization ordinance or the Ellis Act, the uh, compliance documents are required to be given to uh, to someone, right? To either housing department or, is that accurate? Uh, yes, there, there are three different documents that the, the applicant uh, prepared for us. And they are Exhibit A, the 120 day notice to terminate that, that document is there. 
And then Exhibit B, the Relocation Assistance Payment Determination issued by the Housing Department, which is attached to the memo. And Exhibit C, the final settlement statement the listing the payments made to the former renters via escrow company as required by the Rent Stabilization Ordinance. So that, that's all there. They provide the documentation. Mr. Fuentes, anything else on that issue? Yeah. How do we, I mean, it sounds like that was done for this case, but procedurally, how do we know that it's done for every case before a project is uh, sort of like you, you mentioned, the permits are issued and we know yeah. that we're protecting the renters. Maybe it's a, it's a motion that we can work on together, Mr. Chair, to sort of make sure that that procedure is in place. Sure. We would be happy to entertain that so that we get an explanation as to how that works and make sure those procedures are being followed. Okay. We'll follow up that way. Uh, as to the specific plans? Yes, on the second question, I, I read, uh, checked the, the, the interpretation memo for the Venice Coastal specific plan. It is solely for the specific plan. Yeah, for, I understand there are so different languages. there's no languages. mention that, that it applies to any other specific plan. It's not Valley Village nor any other specific plan in the city. Okay, thank you. So uh, with that, there is, unless there's any further questions or comments, we'll move to deny the appeal. Uh, and um, any objections on that? No, so ordered. Okay, thank you. Next item. Next item, uh, Councilman, it's a hardship exemption application by Tyler Dank. Uh, the property's in CD4. Mr. Chair. Yes. Uh, since the posting of the agenda, there was a community impact statement submitted by the Greater Wilshire Neighborhood Council. They're against. And also, we do not have the sworn affidavit from the um, appellant, uh, applicant. Pardon me? What was the last? We do not have a sworn affidavit of the noticing requirement from the applicant. Okay, we deny it. Okay, that's procedural. Is it, uh, does it deem the application deficient? The application was sufficient, yes. Okay. Um, well, if that's the case, uh, in the interest of time and procedural, I think we should move to deny this exemption. And we could hear from CD, CD4 here. Yes, Council District 4, Julia Duncan. Thank you for having me here today, Julia Duncan, uh, Council District 4. We do request that this application be denied. They didn't fulfill any of the requirements or office protocol as far as getting the support of their neighborhood council or abutting neighbors. Thank you. Let me uh, just um, listen to the other two other cards here so we could be just consistent. Um, Peter Dush. Good afternoon, your uh, honorable council uh, members. I'm uh, Peter Duchesno, and I'm um, the immediate next door neighbor. I live at 414 North Plymouth Boulevard with my wife, Jamie, and three children. And uh, we oppose the um, application for the hardship exemption. I, w I won't um, belabor my comments. I've submitted comments for the records, and it's been uh, distributed to you a as well. Uh, but the Large Mount Village Neighborhood Association and the Greater Wilshire Neighborhood Council have also voted to not uh, support it. But I'm here if there are any questions. Thank you. For Great. Thank you. Herman? There's no category <coughs> exemption from the baseline mansonization. Didn't we have the discussion about a year ago regarding mansonization that it was basically unconstitutional? The state of California doesn't allow you to take as much land as you wish to use to build as if you're building hotels and communities or stakeholders control the baseline of housing, but yet this exemption, as John Walsh, HollywoodHighland.org would always say, when you're wrong, you're wrong, and when you think you're right, you're still fucking wrong, because control ordinance number 183497 for this property located at 408 North Plymouth Avenue and not Plymouth Rock, 
Without a physical impact statement, I object. Thank you. Thank you. So there's been a motion to uh, deny. We will, any objection to that? Come out, so ordered. Next item, please. Uh, next item, Councilman, is a hardship exemption application. Again, this one is by Sanjay Sharma and Tina Linham. Uh, the property is in CD4. Thank you. Sanjay Sharma. Hi, how are you? Welcome. Thanks. Um, so briefly, we have lived in Larchmont for 15 years. Uh, it's my wife and I. We have two small kids uh, that are growing very quickly, two boys, 10 and 6. They share a room. The house, the house is getting very small for us. It's 1,120 square feet. We're trying to add one bedroom, uh, and it's gotten tied up in the ICO. We've gotten the support of all of our neighbors. Uh, we've gotten the support of the Larchmont Village Neighborhood Association. Uh, the redesign is, you know, keeps the house exactly intact, the facade. We care about the neighborhood. We've, you know, lived there for a long time and plan to live there for a long time are doing this extension so that we can live there for a long time. Our kids go to school in the neighborhood. My wife works on Larchmont. We, you know, we're part of the neighborhood. Um, so uh, happy to answer any questions about it. It, sure. it keeps the facade entirely intact. We care about uh, preserving the character of the neighborhood. We've put, you know, drought tolerant plants that are uh, Thank you. from the time period into the house. So Thank you. you know. Thank you, Mr. Sharma. Mr. Sharma, how long have you lived there? Uh, since 2002. We've lived in the neighborhood since 2000 and in this house since okay, 2002. Thank you. Yep, Thank you. thanks. Yeah. Herman, then Wayne, and then Julia Duncan from Council District 4. Another exemption under the request of a hardship. But the hardship doesn't adversely impact the one individual. It impacts the community. So if a community can't come in and protest and object and ask for a sustainment on this action, what in the hell is happening with mansonization? There is no such thing as a baseline for mansonization. Because once you construct an edifice so big, like an eyesore, like the many you've allowed, how do you expect people who are living in such areas to benefit from one individual? Mr. Chair, you can eat up the rest of the time. Wayne? All this over 500 square feet on a little house? It's, the house is going to be 1,620 square feet. On, a, on these streets are very busy with traffic too. So you have a guy that's already living there with 500 square feet and you're making him go through all of this. Now thank God, you know, CD4 is, and they're working with David versus the late decedent that used to run that place because he would have had to give at least six, 7,000 of campaign donations to the old councilman but this new councilman is different. And they're going to start to shape up in CD4. The first one was, was correct. The second one, to grant it, in this case, is correct under the guidelines. Because it's a family. He's not tearing down and remansionizationing the property. So approve it. Thank you. Julia, Council District 4. Council members, thank you. Julia Duncan, uh, Council District 4. Mr. Uh, Sharma iterated a lot of the items I was going to go over with you today. It's a small addition of 491 square feet, and I think with the updates to the BMO and BHO, we'll be rectifying a lot of the issues we're facing with the ICOs and the unintended consequences of these small additions that are getting sort of caught in the crosshairs. They have lived in the home for 15 years. They've gotten the support of the Largemont Village Neighborhood Association, and our Council District will have requests that you approve the hardship exemption application. Thank you. Um, considering testimony from Council District 4 and the fact that the proposed project scope and the fact that it conforms with the underlying baseline mentionization ordinance with regard to the maximum RFA, uh, I'd like to ask that we that we uh, approve exemption. 
seconded. Um, any objections? So ordered. Thank you. Next item. Next item, Councilman, it's a hardship exemption application. Again, this one is by Michael Mahan and the properties in CD4. Chris Richards. Uh, I'm a project architect and represent the owner, Michael Mahan, and um, we're requesting an exemption. Uh, he is a homeowner as well uh, with a growing family and uh, again has gotten approval from all his adjoining neighborhood neighbors and um, a very modest addition and keeping the existing uh, building intact as well. Thank you. Thank you. Herman, Wayne, Julia Duncan. It's very obvious that um, CD4, which is a uh, has a lot of focus and attention on uh, Mansonization. He should focus on his council neighborhoods to improve them not just by Mansonization, but remove every eyesore that impacts those who want to extend and build on their properties by permit legally. Not like some who have the intention Mr. of- Mr. Herman, in the totality of your comments, do not focus on this item before us. If you continue, I'm going to ask you to please stop and uh, forego your time on this well, item. Mr. Chair, thank you for redirecting me, but the applicant has filed under Michael Mahan, has uh, basically requested a hardship exemption. So the clarity of this report is based on the Mansonization in CD4 of so I am not perfect in the response to your action, but I hold you accountable for seeing that North uh, Wayne, Irving Boulevard Wayne, is your time exemptually. Is up, Mr. Herman. Your time is up. Pardon Thank me? You. Your time is up. What do you mean my time? Your time is up, sir. Well, the buzzer rang me. I'll just make sure you're Wayne and Julia Duncan. Good. Okay. No to LAPD violence. So, again, thank you, voters. Thank you, voters, for, for putting David in charge of that district and not putting Tom LaBonge's former clerk in there, Carolyn Ramsey. Because one of the things that you wouldn't want to do in a Tom LaBonge, Carolyn Ramsey administration. Wayne, Wayne. Your be, comments I am, do not pertain to it's this application. Sir, to sir, the, please let conduit. me finish. Please let me finish. Your comments do not pertain to the exemption asked for at 445 North Irving Boulevard. If you do not comment on this agenda item, I'm going to have to ask you to stop and forego your time. Thank you. Okay, but the, the councilman is a big part of this process, right? Because... It, his or her opinion really does matter in, in, in granting an exemption for hardship. So I'm totally on point because the most important thing is to have the council person on board. If not, then you really have to go through a full council hearing. So the councilman, I believe, will approach. Thank you, David Rue. Approve it. Julia Duncan from Council District 4. Thank you, council members. Uh, we respectfully request that you approve the hardship application exemption. Um, Mr. Mahone has lived in the neighborhood for six years. He got the support of all of his abutting neighbors. Um, in addition, it would be the increase is 62% of what would be allowed under the baseline mansionization ordinance. We feel it's cohesive with the neighborhood. He's a member of his neighborhood watch, and he does have the support of the community. Do you have any questions? Thank you. No. Thank you. Thank you. I think this project also conforms with the underlying baseline mansionization ordinance with regard to the maximum RFA. Uh, move to approve the exemption. Any objections? Seeing none, so ordered. Thank you. I believe that takes care of all items. Now we have public comment remaining. Thank you. Eric Previn. Antonia Ramirez. Herman, Wayne, welcome. 
Yes, it's uh, Eric Previn, a resident from CD2. And I must say I'm extremely disappointed that this body uh, did, denied the appeal on the Sportsman's Landing Project because you're all now been made aware. Uh, sir, in, in public comment, uh, I'm allowed you to have speak to on whatever I want, sir. No, except for items on the agenda. Sir, that is absolutely an inaccurate That's what we've been you're advised. Not a lawyer, sir, and I don't like do being not interrupted. argue with me. If you argue with me, you're going to be asked to leave. Do not interrupt the speakers. No. Mr. I, Engler, you already shut me down this morning. Stop interrupting me. Sir. I will finish my one minute. What threatening tone, sir? I'm not threatening you. I can be as calm as you, sir. Hey, we're sir, a great time. Excuse, excuse, me, Revin. excuse me, Terry Kopp from Messiah yeah. City Attorney's Office. Public comment, general public comment is for items that are not on the agenda. They're for items at which this, this body has jurisdiction, but not for items that are on the agenda. The time to speak on those items has already passed. It's, it's also not a back and forth period, so. But the, I don't want to be interrupted Mr. Previn, when I'm speaking. Mr. Well, Previn, he doesn't know where he, I'm going. Mr. Previn. Mr. Weezar, go on. You answer to the chair, whether it's me at this committee or any other committee, the chair runs that meeting. And I'm advising you, Through my time, sir, sir, let me finish. Your time has been held. No, Please hold not. this time. I am advising you that here you cannot speak on an item that has already been discussed on that agenda for that day. That is the rule. If you do not like it, take it up with our city attorney's office or other legal opinions. That is the rule, and please do not disrupt me when I'm speaking. I try. I respect you. I respect your time. Really? So that Appreciate I would it. ask that you follow. Thank you. The only thing on the agenda is you reminded me, and she reminded us. And by the sir, way, I'd sir, like sir, to hold on, this I'm is not a back and forth. We are going to begin your time for you to speak in public comment. Okay, I'm confused. May I speak? Okay. Yes, you and your time is starting. Yes. The only thing that was on the agenda previously was an EIR or whether or not the MND or whatever. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about general public comment in Studio City, which is that this board, this commission, committee, whatever, the city hall has let the public down, okay? You've done so. You've done so not once, sir. You, this is a great and beautiful hall. I wish people could see what we're looking at here. This group is not fitting of this room, okay? Because you consistently, consistently deny the individuals who live in the district in favor of these lobbyists. Aaron Green and Afriot, your buddies, Afriot wrote a check back to Krikorian for some significant amount of money because of the state assembly. Thank you, sir. You guys don't care your because you're up. doing your job and you're doing a great job. So thank you. Antonio Ramirez, Herman. Antonio Ramirez, are you here? No. Herman? Uh, general public comment for one fucking minute, and it's going to be Christmas soon. Fuck it. This is how it rolls. When you do not bother to place a K-rail off a fucking street for more than 15 fucking years, how much more delays do we want from 2015 to 2016? FWHA, get involved. I'm going to make a complaint to the Department of Justice in regards to the failure of that land slope condition off of the Soto Corridor. And on top of that, vote no for Mitch Englander, the dwarf, who sits there playing on his little phone solitary. Excuse me, Mr. Speaker, but I have the floor. Will you please shut the gentleman off? Thank you. And in my last 10 seconds, Mr. Englander, I hope to see Herman. you lose as county Herman. supervisor as you walk away, you little dwarf. Herman. Mer Herman, you have been warned that if you continue your conduct, we've rewarned you not to direct council members directly to follow decorum in here. That will prohibit you from speaking and further items. I would love to do it in the future, but I've been told that we can't prohibit people from future committee meetings if they conduct in one particular day. So. Um, did we call Wayne up already? I think we did. No, we haven't, huh? Wayne, Kevin Modis, and Ruth Sarniff. It's good. No one Mitchell Englander for the Board of Supervisors for 2015, since 2016, and 2020, and whatever. As you see, what you can't see listening, but as he was being criticized, which is allowed under the Brown Act, he walked out of the room. People that walk out of the room that are faced with allegations, that is a tacit admission of guilt. Mitchell Englander 
is a scumbag. Mitchell Englander does not represent the people of Porter Ranch who are being gassed to death by the utility company, the gas company. He did nothing because he's busy driving in the Antelope Valley looking in the desert for voters. He's looking for rednecks. He's looking for anybody that will vote for them. But all of them in the Antelope Valley said, I ain't voting for no motherfucker from no city council in L.A. You're done, Mitchell Englander. You're done politically. Kevin Modis, Ruth Sarnoff. Kevin Modis. Hi, my name's, my name's Kevin Modis. I'm with the California Brain Tumor Association, and thanks for this time. Uh, this committee is involved in a lot of land use decisions and decisions uh, placing wireless transmitters around the city. And we have a serious problem here. We have uh, a technology whose health effects are being consciously hidden by the industry that's in favor of them, and an FCC that's run by a man who's a representative of the industry. And there are thousands of studies showing health effects. After I spoke this morning, one of the staffers came up to me from Paul Koretz's office, and he says, you know, I'd like to talk to you. And I said, oh, yeah, why is that? And he says, well, I don't really smoke. I don't drink. I'm young, and I'm pretty healthy, and I'm now getting over cancer. I'm doing okay, but something's up. And I said, something is definitely up. We're microwaving people, and people are, real people are getting real sick. And the Telecom Act should be a clear indication that there's an a real push to cover health effects. Now that this city is leading the way in placing transmitters around the city, I want you to think very carefully and please meet with me so I can bring the experts. Thank you, sir. Show you. Ruth Sarnoff. You know, um, there's um, Ruth Sarnoff. There's a real need to be thinking about the basic things of life if life on this planet as we know it is going to continue um, I have great grandchildren now um, I shudder to think what the planet's going to look like when they're my age if we keep moving in uh, ways in which we're pulling in two directions. The, the 90 projects that are being fi fast-tracked here, the big projects here in Los Angeles, are creating a situation which is like, it's like the perfect storm. I really would like to figure some venue when I can really talk to council people. Um, they don't make themselves very available. Think about it, because I have a lot to Thank share. You, Ms. I'm old, and I know Thank a you. lot. Thank you. I believe that's the last time on our agenda, right, Roberto from Cal? Yes, uh, Councilman Weiser, who is a bar certified attorney at law. Okay. Thank you. Uh, For the meeting, record, <laughs> meeting adjourned. <laughs> it's ordered. Thank you. <laughs>